Welcome to another video tutorial from 2DGameArtGuru.com. Today I'm working in Affinity Designer to show you how to create a seamless textured brush pattern. I'm working with basic shapes, the corner tool, symbols and vector brushes. Let's look at some of the variations of these textured intensity brushes. These are bitmap images that are stretched along the length of the vector curve. I can change the size by altering the width and change the color by altering the stroke color. The white part of the brush will be the colored part, the black part will be transparent with the gray shades in between being semi-transparent. Let's start with a black rectangle. I gave the rectangle an even width as I need a duplicate half the size. This duplicate gets an inner stroke. In the stroke panel, I set the width and set it to a line inside. This allows me to keep the design inside the black rectangle. Using the transform panel, I reduce the width to half of the original size. I turn off the scaling with object and reset the width. I center the outlined rectangle. That way I have one quarter one half and another quarter visible. Using the corner tool, I select two opposite corners and curve those. To get a bolder look, I increase the stroke width a little more before turning the curve into a symbol. I bring up the symbol panel and add a new symbol by clicking on create. I duplicate the symbol and align a copy to the left and another copy to the right, aligning the center of the symbol with the edge of the black rectangle. For this task it helps to have the snapping turned on. I select the curve in the center symbol and scale it while holding control so both sides expand in the same way. I change the two remaining corners using the corner tool and skew the curve. I select all three curves and place them inside the black rectangle. I encountered an issue when I duplicated the clipping mask. When I export the clipping mask, turn it into a PNG and bring it in as a textured intensity brush, it works fine. Even though I have done a few changes to the initial symbol, it still tiles seamlessly. I select the curve inside the symbol, convert it to curves by using the bake appearance. You can also use the convert to curve. That way I can modify it with the node tool. Changing one curve will change the curves in all three symbols. Thanks to the positioning and the use of symbols, the pattern will still tile seamlessly as we have half a symbol, a full symbol and another half of a symbol. I increase the stroke even further, making sure that I center the design and nothing is cut off. I select the rectangle and export it as a PNG image. Setting the area to selection only and the size to something manageable. It helps to lock the dimensions. Next I bring up the brushes panel. Select a category. You might want to create a new one to organize your brushes. I select new textured intensity brush in the menu. Clicking on the little burger icon. Select the newly created PNG file and the brush appears at the bottom of the list. By creating a line with the pen tool, I can assign the new brush to this line. By default, it will be stretched along the line, looking rather deformed. By clicking on the preview image in the brushes panel, you bring up the options. I start by setting it to repeat and adjust the default brush width. The size variation determines how the brush reacts to pressure or the line width tool. 
the brush now is repeated along the line. I can curve it and it will be adjusted. I can change the color or the pressure. Even though I don't think that the deformation works on a detailed brush with a pattern like this. I can easily change that by setting the size variation back to zero. Even though the stroke still has the pressure curve assigned, the brush is not reacting. In order to make room for some variations, I scale the object. In order for that to work, I need to turn the scaling with object back on for the strokes. Rather than use the handles, I go with the transform panel to get even sizes. I remove the copies on either side, ungroup the symbol to turn it back into a curve and turn this curve into a new symbol. I use the pen tool and work inside this new symbol. I duplicate the symbol and place it on either side of the clipping mask, aligning the center of the symbol with the sides of the clipping mask. Quite obviously, it's not that easy. Sometimes it's just not snapping the right way. Now the selection box looks too big, most likely due to the curved shapes I used. I place them inside the curve and now the height is matching again. I duplicate it and place the copies left and right. I check if the clipping mask still tiles seamlessly. I select the rectangle and export another PNG file. I set the area back to selection only, set the size and create the new file. I repeat the process and create a new textured intensity brush, select the new file and adjust the brush settings by turning the body to repeat. Let's create one more variation. I delete the symbols on either side, turn the symbol back into a curve, delete the decor elements inside and change the stroke color to black and give it a white fill. When I do that, a thin hairline appears. This is a problem because I want to keep the black outline the same size as my previous designs with a slightly larger white shape inside that I can place behind the patterns I've created so far to color the hollow areas in the row patterns I've done before. In order to do that, I separate the stroke from the shape via layer expand stroke. This gives me two curves, the black former stroke and the white fill. I decrease the white area with the contour tool to overlap the black by just a little bit. I group these two layers and turn them into a new symbol and use that symbol as I did in the designs prior with one copy placed to the left and one copy placed to the right. I select the rectangle that 
acts as the clipping mask and export a PNG of the selected area only. Create a new file, use that file as a new textured intensity brush. I adjust the body to be repeated. The result is a filled rather than an outlined rope pattern. Let's bring up the appearance panel and combine two stroke patterns in a multiple stroke object. Duplicate the existing stroke, adjust the color, pick the top stroke and give it another pattern, adjust the size and the result is a fill behind an outlined stroke pattern. This allows me to color each one separately. A freedom I don't have with a textured image brush that would combine outline and fill. Once the base design is set up, it's relatively easy to create variations. Play around with the shape, the density of the robe and the decor you place inside. You don't have to limit the multi-stroke object to just two either. You can add another shadow or a highlight pattern on top. I created a set of rope pattern seamless brushes that you can find on my Gumroad page. The link is in the description below. If you have not played around with brushes, maybe have a look at the videos I recorded earlier on pattern brushes and on the sausage dog brush, which was just a fun little project, but it contains some helpful tricks. Brushes are a lot of fun to play with. I would definitely suggest giving it a try. For this tutorial, I used basic shapes, the corner tool, symbols, and vector brushes to create these simple yet flexible rope designs. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you did, please subscribe to my channel, click on the like and the notification, and I will see you again soon.